It will finish. <laughs> Turns out we've timed this, and it's about 2.1%. Uh, okay. uh, the the uh, Mac is 2.1 times as fast as the PC. All right, the PC's almost done. It's Great. done! <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Phil. Yes, please. So, that is an extraordinarily important app, Photoshop. Now let's move on to Luxology. Luxology makes products for 3D communications. And it's my pleasure to welcome Brad Peebler, the co-founder and president of Luxology. Brad? Thank you. Hi, I'm Brad Peebler of Luxology. Luxology is a new company with the sole intent of developing killer technology for 3D visual effects and content creation. Now, there's one constant in our space, the need for speed. If you're going to keep up with the high-end requirements for today's television, film, and gaming visual effects, you need a couple things. First of all, you need raw CPU performance. Second of all, you need really wide pipes for managing and manipulating all that data. Well, that's why when we saw the specs on the G5, we were ecstatic. We were even happier to find out that our 32-bit app would run on their 64-bit uh, chip natively. Of course, we wanted to recompile the app for the G5, so how long did that take? I know you developers are all curious about the migration process. Well, we started our projects using Apple development tools. It took us, drum roll, 15 minutes to move to the G5. Now, that's 12 minutes to get the files off the source server and set up the build environment, <laughs> and three minutes to recompile a clean build of several hundred thousand lines of code on the dual 2 gigahertz machine. So obviously, for you guys, for this audience, compile time's super important. Sorry, Steve, I'm not going to be buying the next serve rack after all. <clears throat> but what's more important is application performance. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Now, what we're going to be looking at, this is actually a, a simple example of a complex problem. Uh, typically, when you think 3D, you think GPU, graphics performance. And with the new G5, we can have the highest-end 3D OpenGL accelerators. What we've done here is we've actually taken out all the high-end GPU work, and we've put a lot of it on the CPU load. So transforms, 3D transforms, all the poly shading, all the enumeration, all happening on the CPU. So should we do a little run-through? Sure, again, for those who don't see the Apple up there, um, you have a Power Mac G5 on your left, the same machine we just saw, and the um, speedy Windows machine up on the right. So if you want to count us down, three, two, one, go. So you can see immediately the G5 just starts pulling that data in and jamming through it. This is motion capture data we got from our good friends at Kedara. Thank you, Kedara. Uh, motion capture data means you have a keyframe at every frame for every joint on every character. So these data files get very large. It's very important that we can push it onto the chip, do all the transforms, and then push it off to the graphics card. Two things you'll notice, obviously, it's double the performance, but you'll also notice that the consistency of the, of the frame rates on the Mac is much better, which is really important for animators who care about timing. So you have to have good timing if you're doing animation. So you see the uh, consistent performance there versus the rather choppy side over here. Should we do a little, uh, little bullet time homage here? Sure. Would you like to do a, a nice cool effect? Let's we'll spin you them around. Head start? Sure. Three, <laughs> no, I, I, I trust you. Three, two, one, go. So you see now we're doing a full 3D transform of the entire world while the animation's playing back, and the G5 chews right through that nary a hitch. So, good stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Thank you, Brad. You know, I wanted to just clarify one thing. We've got a whole bunch of things in our new compilers that really optimize for the G5, but your G4 applications run without recompiling totally natively. And if you want to recompile them to pick up even more performance, it's really easy to do, as Brad just highlighted for us. Next up, Wolfram Research, Science and Engineering. And it's my great pleasure to introduce Teo Gray, co-founder of Wolfram Research. So uh, Steve actually goes back a long way with Mathematica. Believe it or not, it is 15 years ago to the day today that he came to our press conference to help us introduce Mathematica version 1 to the world. And not only that, today we are introducing Mathematica version 5 for the G5. Um, in those 15 years, 
Uh, Mathematica has become pretty much the, the, the de facto standard language for doing mathematics in fields from physics to finance to fundamental biology. Um, but in version 5, we're introducing features to allow you to do sort of very large scale numerical problems, things like solving a system of linear equations with a million unknowns. And that, that happens to be <laughs> exactly the kind of thing that the G5 is especially good at, the kind of thing you could really use it for. So we have a little demo here. Hey, Dale. Um, so I have to be the PC again? Sorry. <laughs> so let's see, are we ready? Three, okay. two, one, go. Okay, so this is kind of a little sort of little simulated real world situation. We have it doing, on the one hand, very large integer calculations like you might do for cryptography, for example. On the other hand, doing some really large numerical matrix operations like you might use in signal processing or image analysis or things like that. Of course, we're using it to make some pretty pictures. Um, and, uh, you know, it's going, I don't know, what, twice, two and a half times? It's, it's going quite a bit faster. Um, and, you know, often it, for this kind of thing, it's really not really a question of whether you could do this with a computer. It's whether you could do it for b before breakfast. Because, you know, I had to try a lot of different examples and figure out some parameters and things. And, you know, the kids are going to wake up. I have to get on a plane, go to California, I give a demo. Um, you, you often have these kind of deadlines where you need an answer today, not sometime next week. You don't have time to write a Fortran program and optimize it. You want to use a high-level, abstract, symbolic computational system in a language like Mathematica where it'll just give you the answer. You want to use six gigabytes of memory? Fine. Don't bother me with the details. I want the answer. Um, we tried to come up with a demo where we'd actually show you the six gigabyte capacity, but we couldn't figure out any that wouldn't just destroy the PC. And, you know, <laughs> it, it was thrashing for a week. It'd screw up the next demo. It's just not good. Um, as you can see from the animation that the, that the Mac is now completed and has been done for a few moments, uh, it's 40 steps of, of the fractal, and the, the PC is now just breaking over 20. So without yeah. breaking a sweat, the, the Mac has just done twice so, uh, the The competition for this machine is not PCs anymore. Basically, for our customers, the competition is high-end Unix workstations that cost twice as much. It's faster than all of them, too. Um, it's, it's sort of... <clears throat> I mean, this, this is really the dream machine. It's got, you know, the Unix operating system that you need for anybody who's using Mathematica, who should be using Mathematica. You know, you've got Unix, you've got all the desktop applications you want. You've got the beautiful Windows system. It's incredibly fast. It's got a spare processor, you know, if you want to leave Microsoft Word running or something like that. Um, <laughs> and so this is where we've come in 15 years of partnership with uh, Steve. And I don't know where we're going to be in 15 years, but I know there's going to be a version of Mathematica. It's going to be running on some kind of, you know, nanotube Mac. And uh, maybe Steve and I will be here shuffling around here to show it to you. Um, I, hope, I hope you all be here to see it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Teo. Next up is our own eMagic. Some of the most popular music creation software on the planet. And it's my pleasure to bring up Gerhard Lengeling, who is the co-founder of eMagic. Good morning, Gerhard. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. The G5 is a dream machine. It is exactly the machine all musicians have waited for. At eMagic, a lot of engineers are musicians too. Some of them are happy enough to get a machine, worked on it, did some optimizations, and obviously also did some benchmarking, and we all have been so surprised. As a benchmarking tool, we used a software instrument, a sampler, and I ask you, how many voices, how many notes do you think is it possible to play at the same time on that machine? 64 over 100, it's 1,000. It's more than 1,000 voices which can be played at the same time on that machine. This is amazing. 